On this week's Glanby Ireland Dairy Focus vodcast, we'll hear about the importance of milk lactose to the milking herd, but also to the milk that they produce. And we'll also hear from Animal Health Ireland on the effects that pneumonia can have, especially as we face in to the housed period. Firstly, we'll hear from members of the technical development team and the milk quality team on the importance of milk lactose to the herd and the milk they produce. Most of the cows in our spring calving herds are coming to the back end of their lactation. And as yields are starting to drop and they're coming close to the dry off period, we often see an increase in somatic cell count. This is a very natural process. As the mammary gland has been productive for many months, it is due a well-deserved rest. And this is reflected in a slight increase in somatic cell count. What we also see is reducing lactose levels in the milk. And this produces some processability problems of the milk, which we will focus on a bit more. And the lower lactose is really reflecting uh, the nutritional status of the cow, which is also changing, coming into the housing and going into the dry period. Commonly, cows might be milked maybe once a day for a few days near the, the end of lactation, just to get them to the dry off. There are a few risks with this. And if there is already an increase in somatic cell count, or if there is already a reduction in lactose levels, both of those will only increase when you go to once a day milking. So keep that in mind when you see an increase in somatic cell count, or when you see lower lactose levels in your milk, try to avoid going to once a day milking. Do not exaggerate both of these processes. Milk lactose can also indicate to us what might be going in, on in the herd in regards to dry matter intake capacity not being met, poor quality feed supply, or restricted energy intake in the diet. What causes low lactose within the herd? Things that put stress on the system, maybe a low immunity herd, but also grazing in poor conditions or grazing poor quality grass, having a poor quality silage or fodder buffer in front of the cows will result in a low lactose level, thin cows, low production cows, and also where the dry matter intake capacity of that cow is not being met or her energy intake is restricted. Milk processing at this time of the year depends on milk functionality. That's why we have an emphasis on milk lactose levels. Milk lactose levels give a great indication of stage of lactation of the cow and also how the milk will process. If milk lactose levels are low or the volume is very low in a bull tank, that milk isn't really suitable for processing. What happens is the milk in a low volume situation gets really beaten up by the agitator. You almost get buttering in your milk, but also that has a lot of free fatty acids which won't make great product. If milk lactose is low, we find that we can't process the milk into great dairy products. The main focus is always about the cow and the health of the cow for a farmer. And that's absolutely perfect. That's why dry off your cows early and that will actually keep your lactose levels high. You'll avoid fines and you'll certainly have a really great spring lactation. And the other one to watch is high cell count. Cell count should never be over 200,000 for, for a herd even at this side of the year. So focus on your cell count. So even if cows are almost near drying off, treat any mastitis cases as they come along. So that again, you're going to set a really good foundation for next springtime. Now we'll hear the latest from Animal Health Ireland on the effects pneumonia can have within the herd. Frank O'Sullivan here, veterinary practitioner in County Meath. I want to show you today a lung that has been damaged. In fact, this animal has pneumonia or had pneumonia. So here we see the healthy lung in the back and in the apical or front lobes we have the damaged lung. Now we know this is virus pneumonia from this post-mortem. That's in contradiction or in contrast with the common problem these days, lungworm, which mainly affects the back lobes of the lung. So a key aspect for us at this time of year is to differentiate well, is this problem who's or lungworm, or is the issue viral or bacterial pneumonia? And we do that by means of faecal leg counts to look at the bear man technique and look to see our lungworm are uh, present, or we might take nasal 
swabs to look and see what, what's present in the lungs. So lung tissue should be full of air as this one is at the back, the nice healthy lung tissue and its function is to exchange oxygen uh, into the bloodstream that's then circulated to the body. And because it's full of air, when we put a sample of it into water, it floats. Look at the damage though that has happened to the front of this lung. We see here that at least one third of the lung is very consolidated and dark. So really the message is this is not functioning. And to show that, if I take a little sample of this lung tissue and then of the damaged tissue and we put it into the um, water, you see what happens. So the reason it sinks is that the lung tissue is not functional. So there's no medicine that I can give from my car that's going to cure this animal. And really antibiotics to this type of case would be of little benefit. So if ever there was a message for disease prevention, especially this challenging time as we approach housing or buying cattle or you know weaning them, it's about prevention. That's why we use vaccines to prevent this type of pneumonia. It's why we do faecal egg counts to try and identify if parasites are present. Of course, the added benefit to the consumer is that by taking that preventative approach, we don't need to use antibiotics on this, and that's becoming more and more important in our modern world. Some calves may not be affected as badly as this. In fact, you could have a smaller amount of lung damage where the animal is not performing properly. And this, if it happens in the early days and weeks of life, could affect that lifetime performance of the animal. If you like, the subclinical effect. So to prevent that, all those aspects of good housing, good vaccination, good feeding, good colostrum, they're all so important to set the farmer and the calves and animals up for a healthy life. For more information on any of the topics covered in this week's Glanbia Ireland Dairy Focus Vodcast, contact your local Glanbia Ireland representative or log on to glanbiaconnect.com.